Hey guys, it's Bina and we've been blasting the explosive ballista. I wanted to make a quick video showcasing you how exactly it is done, explain the build, take this as a sort of a build guide and um, it is still the very, it's still like the third day of the first cycle of Last Epoch 1.0 and uh, I am pretty cooked, but let's go over it, right? So what are we playing? We're playing explosive ballista. We are using explosive trap with siege engineering to proc some ballistas when our traps explode. We're trying to grab as many traps as possible while keeping a low mana cost. By low mana cost, I mean zero mana cost. So it needs to be zero mana cost for this specific setup to function, okay? So Ballista is what we're going to be using as our main damage source. This has a, a node in it, Arm Construction, that gives it more damage per dexterity and increased area per dexterity. So we're trying to stack dexterity as much as possible. I have 120 dexterity here. Um... So you can get this on your, um, you can get this on your rings, on your gloves. You can get this on your helmet, on your boots. Um, like these are really good, giving you all attributes. Peak of the mountain is a key piece as well. You might want to, um, you might to have a smooth transition into it. You might want to use peak of the mountain. You could use Bose Arnarchy staff, as it is mentioned in the build guide here. So in the build guide, uh, ideally I would like to use Apogee of the Frozen Light with Cradle of the Erased. So a sword and board setup to be more tanky and still get quite a bit of, da of damage from the um, from the sword. Why is the sword giving us damage? Because it has plus three to cold skills and it also has a more multiplier, um, a more cold damage to, to chilled enemies. And we can easily chill enemies if you spec into this note here because your ignite is transferred to chill chance for your ballista and so you get ignite chance from flaming shots, right? So... If you do so with the sword, you put one point here, you get three extra points. So that means that you get two free points that you can invest even more into its tree to get even more damage out of it, right? So that is that, is that portion. Um, we are using Dive Bomb as extra damage, basically extra DPS and burst damage against priority targets and especially bosses. Dive Bomb right now is extremely powerful. We're specking into like all of the more damage nodes getting some cooldown and getting some mana back and put it to a zero mana cost as well. This one doesn't matter. It's just easier on your mana if you put it down to zero mana cost. Uh, so Dive Bomb is your Falcon, right? So it scales off of your Falconry. And so you can also give it uh, some of your stats. So with these nodes here and then your Ballistas as well, giving you're giving 75% of your damage stats, your Ballista and 100% of your crit. Like they both scale in the same way. They both scale with dexterity, right? More damage per dexterity, falcon damage per dexterity. They both scale all in the same ways. So it's extremely good, uh, extremely good synergy there. You get a kill threshold on the falcon, which is really nice against bosses, especially boss DR. So Last Epoch has dynamic boss DR, which really, really helps. And then we're grabbing whatever we can to help with the build. Um, shift, we're using it as a utility, movement. Uh, invulnerability while shifting, giving us a ton of dodge after shifting as well, right? So we're one second after shifting, we're pretty much we're pretty much cap dodge. Um, okay, we kind of died here. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll go back in it. We, your your dodge afterwards, right? And then you're also cleansing elements. You're healing yourself. You get a shorter cooldown. All good stuff. Key note in explosive trap to boost the, your falcon's damage even more. You want to put it one point into sky signal. And one point into free lofting bird to cool for the cooldown. This because we're spamming traps and we have zero mana cost. Uh, our trap is going to give us uh, a, it's going to be a mana generator, so we're going to be able to spam it as long as we want, and it's going to give us elemental pen and physical pen for each stack that we get, right? Of stack signal, so we can actually spam this like crazy. Uh, I am also getting stacks of um, dust crowd here. Dust crowd gives you dodge and glancing blow. So as you can see, the more I spam my traps the more I get some dodge. So we reach easily over 50% dodge there. And then uh, our chance to get a glancing blow is also increased to 100, over 100%. So glancing blow is extremely good. It gives you a 35% less damage taken from glancing blows. Let's go over a uh, small echo here and see how this does. Extremely good build, insane AOE. Absolutely like, I've, I've been, this is like 500 something corruption. Uh, we've reached level 100. It's really good. I would like to be a bit more tanky, though. I would like to use the sword and shield setup. Um, and I don't have any... Okay. Key note here, I don't have any idols. Well, most of my idol slots I don't have. I don't have my blessings. 
I've just, I've just been rushing to 100 basically with this build. So as you can see, screen wide AoE, when you're in trouble, you can throw a decoy. Decoy grabs the aggro for you. Um, especially good against objectives or when you want to get uh, the boss aggro off of you. Right? So extremely good. It's not, it's not the fastest. I've updated this build uh, on the Maxwell page to reflect what I've, uh, what I've changed with playing it up to 100. Very good build. Insane damage. Insane clear. It's just not the fastest to go through the echoes, but still really, really good. And now I want to show you the single target of this build. So let's go ahead and kill the, um, well, this boss here. Let's see how this goes. So what you want to do, you want to spam your traps and then you want to, you want to hold, well, you, you, you want to use dive bomb and falconry as um, support DPS basically. And Dive Bomb does a crap ton of damage. So this is like a 500 corruption boss, like 500 something. As you can see, no problem whatsoever. And you can still take quite a hit actually. With the glancing blows, with your dodge, with your guaranteed silver shroud dodges as well, it's very, very good. All right, echo conquered. Like it is, it is a pretty easy build to play because you're spamming explosive trap. If you want, you could hold dive bomb. You could hold falcon strike as well. You could always hold this because um, these are instant cast as well, right? You have a node in your passive tree. Intuitive connection that gives Falcon Strike and Dive Bomb instant cast. So you can actually cast them without any animation whatsoever. So that's pretty good. And there's also another very important node, Coordinated Fade. You want to put this on your trap. Uh, the reason why is this gives you a Silver Shroud every 10 seconds. And Silver Shrouds enable you to dodge the next hit. So uh, so long as you have a Silver Shroud, you can't get hit by any damage uh, that can be dodged. There are some things in the game that cannot be dodged. For example, one I think about is the big slam from Lagan. Uh, that one cannot be dodged. But overall, this will save you in like so many situations. And then if you have this set up and then you also have the shield, you can reach 100% block chance. And then your first hit will always be dodged. Your second hit will always be blocked. And then, I mean, it's, it's just really, really strong defense mechanism. Right? Uh, so... You might have seen, I am not using the sword and shield in my actual gameplay. I am using the um, Flight of the First bow. My main reason is, without, without this bow, right? Without this bow that gives you Ancient Flight and Crit Avoidance. I don't have capped Crit Avoidance right now uh, with my rings that I have. So, I'm mainly using this for that. I'm also capping my crit easily with this. But it's mainly because of my, my lack of gear that I'm using this setup. And not because I would actually prefer to use this. I haven't done the math, one versus the other. I think the upside of being more tanky is better than... This is probably a little bit more damage, but still, the Apogee Sword and the, and the Shield is extremely good, and you don't even need to use the Cradle of the Erase. You could use a regular Shield, and that would still be fine, right? If you have the Apogee Sword. Um, especially if you have LP, this is really, really strong, and another more multiplier for your damage. So, I don't have my idols. I don't have my passives. Um, I am... I'm gear all right, right? I got to level, uh, I got to level 100. My gear is okay, but it's not really nothing crazy. No LP foot in the mountain, no LP peak. Like I don't, I don't have any legendaries yet, right? Um, so overall, extremely good build, extremely good clear, extremely good single target. The one thing it's lacking is a little bit of uh, mobility, but that will come uh, a lot with foot of the mountain with LP. Try to put movement speed here, kind of important. Other than this, that's pretty much the build, guys. You got screen wide AoE for um for your eyes pleasure. Don't forget to wear sunglasses if you build this build, guys. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment on the video. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.